The story we heard from investor William Browder conjures up ghosts of the Cold War, a communist Soviet Union without basic rights or privileges for its citizens. Uh, Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili speaks of Russia as a threat, a regional bully flouting international standards of behavior. So is this really a, an accurate picture of Russia? Joining me to talk about all this is Russia scholar Stephen Cohen of New York University and longtime Princeton University before that, and Brett Stevens, of course, foreign affairs columnist at the Wall Street Journal. Brett, whatever the internal character of the Russian state, does it matter? Which brings up uh, Saakashvili's point. Can we still do business with them? Because the Obama administration has premised, uh, a, you know, a very important part of its foreign policy on a kind of reset with Russia. We're going to be more practical. We're going to work with these guys. We may not like them, but they've got a lot of nukes. They've got a lot of bargaining chips we need. Is, is, it, is it fine to try and uh, achieve some kind of workable relationship with them? This is fundamentally um, a country that's run by the KGB or the graduates of the KGB who are educated in a you know, certain way of, of doing business. A, a, a Russian uh, uh, acquaintance who knows Putin very well once made the point, he said Russia doesn't actually have a foreign policy. They, what they do is they have operations. So they, w the way they dealt with, um, say, Ukraine and the gas, it was like a KGB operation. The same with Georgia and the invasion in uh, 2008. So there's a mindset that you have to kind of grasp. And part of that mindset, of course, is that the KGB was the proudest of the institutions in the Soviet Union. They were the ones who most believed in muscular Soviet power. And so what you know, Putin's foreign policy has really been about has been an effort to cobble back together, to reconstitute something like the old Soviet Union. And so I think unless you sort of understand their way of seeing the world and their ambitions for Russia, which aren't really similar to, say, the ambitions of, you know, Britain or Japan or, or France, normal classic nation states, I think you're going to be consistently misreading uh, their intentions and also the administration's ability to genuinely reset the button with Russia. People forget that President Bush spent the first five or six years of his, of his administration trying to press a reset button with Russia very unsuccessfully. Steve? What? <laughs> well, I disagree with virtually every word of what he said, so you should probably ask me a specific <laughs> question. That's not how Russian foreign policy is made. Uh, reconstituting the Soviet Union is not the driving force. Uh, every country has different dynamics in its foreign policy, so I don't know what normal... Uh, some people think the United States has behaved abnormally in recent years and all the wars we've gotten ourselves into. Um, Putin doesn't make foreign policy by himself. The KGB faction is very important, but it's not the only faction. There's the military, there's the oligarchs, there's the civilian bureaucracies. There's a struggle underway in Russia today over foreign policy. But I would argue, and in fact in my recent book I do argue, that Putin's foreign policy since about 2002 or 3 has been primarily in reaction to American foreign policy and not driven by any particular agenda of his own. Now, I could illustrate but, that but, if but you want, me, but that's the underlying dynamic. Tell me what you think of the reset, of Obama's reset. I, in my book, I argue that when Obama became president, we were on the verge of a new Cold War. Uh, and that when he said he wanted to reset it, he wanted to avert this possibility of a new Cold War. Uh, looking back over about a year and a half, uh, he's made a good start. But in this relationship that he's established, he thinks with Medvedev. That's not a good idea what he's doing with sort of my friend Medvedev, but accept it for what it is at the moment. There are ticking time bombs that mean that the relationship and the progress he's made are exceedingly unstable. One ticking time bomb is Iran. You're right about that. But I think for different reasons than you specify. But Iran's a ticking time bomb. So in why should he handle Russia on Iran? Because well, the Russians do not seem to be cooperating in the way with at least the Europeans and the Americans I, would define cooperation. I don't know that. What they've done in the last six or eight weeks surprises me on the question of sanctions that they, because there's been a struggle in Moscow uh, over whether or not they should sign on to hard sanctions. But the Russians have a fundamentally different problem with Iran than we have. They live near Iran. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that Russia has 20 to 25 million Islamic citizens of its own. It's had problems with radical Islamic terrorists and related groups in Russia. Iran has never done anything to encourage or abet 
Islamic challenges to the Russian state, for which Russia is enormously grateful, then their economic relationship with Iran that you've mentioned. So Russia's geopolitical problem with Iran is completely different from ours. It too does not want a nuclear armed Iran, but it needs a friendly Iran. Well, we're missing, I think, one, we haven't mentioned energy, uh, and I think that's really the key to this entire puzzle. I think the Russian interest with Iran is just to keep the pot on a low boil for as long as uh, they can. So what do they really want from Iran? They want a steady crisis in the region where they can be, they can pose as a reliable supplier of, of energy, gas as well as uh, petroleum, uh, to, uh, to the West. At a, at, at, a, at a particular price point. That, that more or less explains their, uh, uh, their interest in Iran, which is why they're never going to be our solution, our silver bullet to a genuinely effective sanctions regime against the country. Do you believe that Russia can be uh, a cooperative great power, a, a country that works in concert with the United States, Britain, France, Japan or are its interests, not, there's nothing about venal being Russians being venal, are the interests so different that they will, we will always have this tense relationship with them? Well, the Soviet Union was for 25 to 30 years. Uh, we, the United States and the Soviet Union, for all our rivalry, manage things pretty well. So if you decide that post-Soviet uh, Russia is not and cannot, that would make you nostalgic for the Soviet Union. And we don't want to go there, do we? Sure. The answer is, of course. Of course. There's no, this, this is not a serious discussion. You have to get along with Russia. Russia, of all the countries in the world, but do is they, probably do they more... want to get along with us? Russia will never want that because Russia sees itself as a spoiler state. They seek their advantage in our, our their advantages in our problems. And I, I would be very surprised to imagine that we're going to get any genuine cooperation from the Russians. And if the Cold War, the last 25 years of the Cold War, is your model, that's a, that's a worrying model to take. All right, we've got to break this up. We will be right back with Brett Stevens and Stephen Cohen.